you don't have to go very far in information science before you get into some fairly deep philosophical questions. And the one that I want to address in this video is what is information, which is really the most fundamental question in information science. I mean, it is after all called information science. If we can't define what it is that information is, then it's not exactly clear what it is that we're studying. We need to get a grip on the phenomenon before we can really meaningfully move on to the science part of information science. So this is a quote by T.S. Eliot from the poem The Rock, and it's a favorite among information scientists, as you can probably imagine. Um, where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge? Where is the knowledge we have lost in information? Now, much as I like T.S. Eliot's work, I have to admit I don't find this quote particularly useful because basically it implies that there is some kind of a hierarchy here, right? Wisdom is the best, then knowledge, then information, right? But Eliot doesn't say anything about why wisdom is better than knowledge. Why is knowledge better than information? You know, or even what wisdom is. Right. So, of course, that's the prerogative of the poet to not define his terms. Right? But still, I would argue that this notion of a hierarchy of wisdom, information, knowledge, and then sometimes information scientists put data below that. So wisdom, information, sorry, wisdom, knowledge, information, data. Right, the notion of that kind of a hierarchy without more details about what those things mean or why there's that value judgment there is not particularly useful for our purposes. So let's talk about information more systematically. There is a scholar in the field of information science by the name of Michael Buckland um, who wrote a paper a number of years ago titled Information as Thing, and I will provide a link to you, to that paper for you. Now, Buckland proposes that there are three types of information in the universe. The first, obviously, is information as thing. Any thing that carries information, for example, a book, right? A book or any informative thing can be informative. We say that we get information from a book, but we call digital objects information. Right? We say that information moves over the internet, we say we're transferring information when we're uploading and downloading files, etc. Right? We would never call a book paper information. But we use the term digital information all the time, and everybody understands what you mean when you say that, right? A file, a digital file, isn't information any more than a book is. Right? A book is an information object. It is a thing that carries information for us under certain conditions, in certain situations. Right? It's easy to imagine a situation in which a book would not carry any information at all, right? If a book is written in, for example, Hindi, which is a language that I do not read and I do not understand when I hear it, right? That book is not going to carry any information for me. It will have no informative value for me at all, no matter how brilliant that book is, right? It's not really informative, right? It may be information for someone, but not for me, right? So my first point here is that information as thingness is situational. The second type of information that Buckland talks about is information as knowledge. That is, what's in your head, right? For example, 
at the end of this course, you will hopefully, anyway, possess information about metadata that you do not have now, right? Information as knowledge is intangible. It is not a thing. It is a state. It's a state of being. And the third kind of information that Buckland talks about is information as process. It is the process of becoming informed. To have knowledge in your head, you have to learn it. Right? Learning is a process. It's the process of becoming informed. Information as process sits between information as thing and information as knowledge. It's the process by which you convert the information in the thing into knowledge in your head. Now, once you start talking about becoming informed, you start talking about what is informative. And the discussion gets subjective very quickly. Right? Our book in Hindi may inform you, but not me, because you can read Hindi and I can't. Right? Something that's new to me may not be to you. It informs me because it's news to me, but it may be old hat to you, so it does not inform you. Now, Buckland uses the word evidence in this paper, information is thing, right? He's using this term not necessarily in the same way that the term evidence is used in the law, but the legal use is useful for us to keep in mind here. Legal evidence is information that the jury uses to make decisions. Right? For Buckland, information as thing is evidence. If a thing is informative, it's evidence of something, and that something can change your state of knowledge. So we've been kind of dancing around an issue here, and we need to come face to face with it, which is this. Is information entirely subjective, right? What's in your head is ultimately the end of information. Or is there such a thing as objective information, right? To put it differently, is it possible for there to be a thing that is informative outside of someone being informed by it? If a tree falls in the forest, does it generate information? DNA is a commonly used example to illustrate this particular discussion. Now, DNA is a command set for making bodies, basically. Does it make sense to call DNA information? Right? Yes, the human genome and other animals' genomes have been decoded, and yes, you know, geneticists can look at a genome and say, well, this encodes for brown eyes, this does this other thing. Right? So we understand the language, if you will, of the genome. But DNA wasn't made for us to decode it necessarily. Does it make sense to call DNA information outside of that understanding of that we've gleaned from decoding genomes? Right? Because we do call DNA information. We use the term genetic information all the time in discussions of DNA. There are even laws that govern proper use of genetic information. So does it make sense to say that DNA informs something? And what is that something anyway? Cells? Right? Proteins? Right? There's a debate between two authors in the published information science literature about the subjective versus objective 
approaches to information. And it's a very interesting debate, and I will link to the papers in which these two authors have this discussion, because it makes for a fascinating reading. But we've come full circle to information as thing, right? You could argue that DNA is information as thing. DNA is an informative thing. You could maybe even argue that DNA is information as process because DNA provides the instructions for the processes by which proteins are turned into bodies. Right? But honestly, I don't know how you could stretch the definition of information as knowledge to encompass DNA. So again, Michael Buckland has another paper, which I will provide a link to because it makes for some really excellent and entertaining reading. Buckland's other paper is called, What is a Document? And in this paper, he goes even further in his discussion of information as thing. Uh, what is a document is a very fun paper. I would encourage you to read it if you find this sort of thing interesting. In, in What is a Document, Buckland talks about Suzanne Briette, who was a French information scientist mid-20th century, where she poses the question in some of her work, is an antelope a document? Now, of course, in order to answer that question, we have to define document, which is, of course, the whole point of the paper, what is a document, right? But Briette and Buckland come to the conclusion that an antelope running wild on the veldt or wherever it is that antelopes live is not a document, right? But an antelope is a document when it's in a zoo or when it's an object of study, right? Under those conditions, an antelope becomes an informative thing, right? And so finally, we come back to metadata, right? Why is a wild antelope not a document, because by itself, running wild, it's just an antelope. It is just for itself. It's not informative. It's not informing anyone, right? But when an antelope is an object of study, it's put in context. It becomes informative in that context, right? It becomes not just an antelope. It becomes an antelope and information about the antelope, right? An object plus metadata about that object makes the object informative, right? Treating the object as evidence is what generates metadata about that object, right? Now, <coughs> excuse me, we're getting very close to semiotics. What is the sign and what is the what, excuse me, what is the signifier and what is the signified? And I'm going to take a pass on the semiotics, but that may be an interesting topic for discussion. The point here is that metadata is an inherent part of how we deal with objects as human beings, right? Yes, antelopes exist, DNA exists, things existed before humans came along. But for us, as humans, it may be impossible to have an object just by itself, right? Perception generates metadata and puts objects in context, right? There's a philosophical issue here, right, in that you can't really separate yourself from your perception of the outside world. I personally believe that there is an objective universe out there. But I also believe that we can't know it directly because we experience the universe filtered through our senses, filtered through our minds, filtered through our understanding. You can do the best you can to remove personal bias and preconceptions, but you can't change the fact that the human brain is wired in a particular way and we experience the universe using our minds. So what is information? It depends on who you ask, right? Information as thing, 
is an object that has some informative value, whether or not that thing is informing someone at this particular moment. Information as knowledge is what's in your head. And information as process is the process or the experience of becoming informed. In other words, learning. I personally like information as process. I think it makes it clear that information is a change in your state of being. The term that would be used in chemistry is a state change. Right? The state of what exactly is being changed by information as process is less clear. It's a change in your state of mind, perhaps. Right? But I want to wrap up this discussion with a quote from Gregory Bateson that information is a difference which makes a difference. Right? A difference in the world, a thing that changes the state of the world, which makes a difference to your state of knowledge, to your state of mind. Right? If you were to ask different information scientists, I'm sure you would get many different answers about what information is, but this one is mine.